ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Chapter 4 text 9 Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace Shri La AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada founder acharya of this school Janma karma cha me devyam Evang yo veti tattvata Tyaktva deham punar janma Naiti maameti sorjuna Just go ahead with the translation. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Absolute Truth. He is the cause of all causes. He is the object of knowledge in the Vedas. And He is that object for which we are all searching after. He descends into this world into each into each universe on the earth planet within each universe once in a day of brahma in his original form as krishna and he descends on this planet and on other planets in various forms of avatars in order to deliver the conditioned souls there are many reasons for krishna's appearing these have been discussed by great sages and devotees in this verse krishna mentions the importance of understanding about his appearance in this verse krishna says janma karma chame divyam that my appearance and activities are transcendental transcendental means not impelled by the three modes of material nature every conditioned soul is forced to take different positions in the material world according to his karma but the avatars are different they descend from the spiritual world the world of transcendence into this material world to lift others up to that spiritual world avatar means one who descends krishna is known as avatari means that he is the source of all the avatars but he's also an avatar in the sense that he descends from the spiritual world now simply to understand that krishna's appearance in this world and his activities in this world are completely transcendental is the cause of liberation to understand clearly and properly means that on giving up this body one will not have to take another body not another material body or artificial body but he will regain his original spiritual form in the spiritual world with krishna This subject is discussed in some detail here in the beginning of the fourth chapter of the Gita. Up till now, Krishna has explained how everyone in this material world is getting body after body, and he says the same thing, apparently, about himself. When Arjuna inquires, when, I, when Arjuna inquires about an apparent contradiction that Krishna states. At the beginning of this fourth chapter uh, Krishna speaks about the nature of this knowledge that he's speaking to Arjuna and the fact that he spoke this to the sun god among the vasvate yogam praktavana hamadyam vidasvam manave praho manor ikshva kavi bravit Krishna says that I spoke this knowledge to the sun god who spoke it to his son Ikshvaku, who spoke it to Manu. Evang Paramparam. In this way, by being handed from guru to disciple, this knowledge was received in the line of saintly kings. But in course of time, the succession was broken. So, Eva Yang Maya Tedya, Yoga Prokta Paratanaha. Bhaktosi me sakachi ti rahasyam hiyata rutamam. So Krishna says that I'm now again speaking that very ancient knowledge to you today because you are my devotee and my friend. But Arjuna says, wait a minute, I, what about that thing you just said 
two verses of it, two verses before that it that you spoke to Vivasvan the sun god aparang bhavato janma parang janma vivasvataha katame tad vijaniyam tamado proktavaniti he says that you're telling me that you spoke to the sun god but the sun god was born well ahead of you you know we're contemporaries krishna and arjuna were contemporaries so how did you speak to the sun god way back in time prabhupad mentions in the purport if you calculate this must have been more than 130 million years before krishna was speaking to arjuna so krishna and arjuna were on, were on the battlefield they were both around 120 years 125 years old mm-hmm. which we may think is very old but people lived longer in those days they didn't they were much bigger and stronger too now these uh, olympic champions would be put to shame is krishna's around 13 feet tall like that. in that particular form 13 feet that's about what uh, 4 meters something like that so anyway arjuna is uh, how am i supposed to understand this what are you what are you talking about so then uh, krishna explained what he'd already explained that everyone is having many births bahuni may be a titani janmani tavatan charjuna tane hangve desavani natvangve parampara He says that I already explained that both you and I have had many births. Everyone has many births. Now the difference is that I can remember all of them, but you cannot. Then Krishna goes on to explain his transcendental position, which up till now he had not in the Bhagavad Gita he had not explained. He had given Arjuna tr- knowledge that the, the soul is different from the body, and Arjuna had surrendered to Krishna, accepting him as guru. But apparently. at this point arjuna was not cognizant of krishna's supreme position so krishna told ajopi sanavya yatma bhutana mishvaro pisan prakritim swami dishtaya sambhavami yatma maya ya krishna says although i am unborn and my transcendental body is not subject to destruction i appear in this world by my own desire through the agency of my own transcendental potency now here krishna introduces what is the difference between himself and the conditioned soul the conditioned soul is also aja unborn but he appears to take birth again and again but krishna he is avyaya atma means that his body is not subject to destruction in other words he never dies no one ever dies but the conditioned soul goes through the suffering of the death of his body all of the soul never dies but because krishna is not different from his body his body is purely spiritual his body is not subject to death or decay that's why we, you see krishna is present on the battlefield of kurukshetra 125 years old apparently but still looking like a young boy young because uh, krishna is vijara vimrityu he's not subject to old age or death so he, krishna explains that he comes to this world for a particular purpose yada yada hi dharmasya glane bhavati bharata abhutanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamiham krishna says whenever there is a decline in religious practices dharma glani means a decline in dharma vanasham dharma sanatan dharma not exactly religion as it's known in the modern in the western languages so whenever there's dharma glani a, a decline in dharmic practices and an uprising of irreligion the krishna says i appear in this world paritranaya sadhunam to protect the devotees to to uplift and deliver to save the devotees vinashayata dushkritam to destroy the rascals dharma sansthapanarthaya for the sake of reestablishing religious principles dharma sambhavami yuge yuge i appear in every age ashrasas then he comes again to this verse which we have read today janma karma cha me devyam ivam yaveti tatpataha jatva dehang punar janma naiti mamiti sa that one who can understand the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not 
upon leaving the body, take birth again in this material world, but comes to me, O Arjuna. And uh, Krishna goes on later in this chapter and later in Bhagavad Gita to explain more about his transcendental nature. How important it is to understand Krishna's transcendental nature. Just by understanding this one can be delivered. You need to give some more to the Translators also. So uh, Krishna explains this uh, later in the chapter. Name karmani limpanti, name karma pramespriha. That I am, even though I live in, I come to this world, I perform activities, I am not attached to the results of such activities. He goes on to explain the various manifestations of his opulences within this material world. But actually to understand Krishna is a very great subject. As we have heard, Bhagavad Gita is the a preliminary spiritual knowledge of understanding the soul and Krishna. But it is a very great subject. No one should think, well, now I know Bhagavad Gita. Put it away. Well, I know, I know it fully. You can't know Bhagavad Gita fully. It's not possible. Even if you learn all the verses, it's not possible to know Bhagavad Gita fully. Because Bhagavad Gita describes Krishna. And no one can know Krishna fully. Jananta eva janantu kimba hukyanam prabhu manasa vapusa vacho vaivavatthava gocharaha Lord Brahma said, that others may think, others may say, I know Krishna. Yes, yes, I know Krishna. But Lord Brahma says, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know Krishna at all. I thought I knew something about Krishna. I made the Brahma Sanghita, which is a summary of the science of God. But now I realize that uh, neither by the mind or by words or by a mental, uh, or by, by any bodily activities, it's not possible to understand Krishna in full. Because even if you are able to count all the atoms in the universe, still you could not count the glories of Krishna, the different transcendental qualities of Krishna. And even if you were to try to explain even one of those transcendental qualities, you couldn't fully begin to understand it. So whatever is, whatever is described in Bhagavad Gita is the science of God, in concise form. And that is further elaborated upon in Sriman Bhagavat. And the Acharyas have given their commentaries on Bhagavat. But there's no end to the description of the, the glories of Krishna. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsar Thakur once lectured for 30 days on the first verse of Bhagavatam for two hours every day and didn't cover the same subject matter once. That was just the first verse. Even to, uh, even to explain the first um, what's that called? Part of a sentence. The first clause, that uh, the absolute truth is the source of all emanation. He maintains everything and ultimately destroys everything. Even to explain that, it's, uh, there's no end to how explaining because he, how the whole material world is going on. All the studies of science, art, history, Geography, sociology, anthropology, psychology, all these different studies, they're all included in that. They're, they, they're all contained in a tiny little bit of that. that all, all these studies together comprise a tiny part of the knowledge of Janmadhya So, But mostly the, the scholars, they don't even understand that. Therefore, their studies, they're incomplete. Even though they're very learned, they don't know that the object of their study should be to see how everything relates to the source of everything, namely Krishna. So all these studies are useless unless we realize that the object of all knowledge is to understand the absolute truth, Krishna. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna recommends that instead of trying to understand so many peripheral details, Try to understand me, Krishna said. Because even if, you're, even if you're an expert scientist, philosopher, anthropologist, sociologist, psychologist, geographer, doctor, or whatever, right. even if you have a good brain, if you don't know Krishna, yeah. then you have to get born again. You have to go back to university and study all those things again. If you're fortunate enough not to be born as a worm in stool, 
So the real, ob- the real thing to understand, the most important thing is to understand Krishna, how his appearance and activities are transcendental. But it's not such an easy thing to understand because muhyanti yat suryaha, even the great demigods like Brahma, we just mentioned this verse, are bewildered by the potencies of Krishna. For all their brilliant intelligence, which also comes from Krishna, they're bewildered by another potency of Krishna, which is called Mahamaya. And therefore, their big brains don't help them at all because they don't know Krishna. So the most, or the, the vital subject of knowledge is to understand Krishna. How his appearance in this world is transcendental. Today is called Janmashtami. means the eighth day of the waning moon or the dark moon in the month of which month in Bhadra, in which Krishna appears. That's also, it's also known as Krishna Jayanti. Jayanti means uh, the particular, refers to the particular astrological configuration in which the star Rohini is exalted. Uh, well, actually, not astrological, uh, sorry, astronomical. Astronomical. So, to use this word Jayanti for any other day except the appearance of Krishna is actually a mistake. Sometimes we hear it said Nrsimha Jayanti, Baladev Jayanti, Gandhi Jayanti, Ambedkar Jayanti. You didn't hear of Ambedkar, you're lucky. Never mind. <laughs> Another nice rascal. Nice you say that in India, you'll get put in prison. Um, if you're lucky enough not to get torn to pieces. Um, so, they, they've made all this. Jayanti for anyone, but actually even the incarnations of God, except Krishna and also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaur Jayanti. Mm-hmm. They, they should not. The, the word Jayanti should only be used for Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Take appearance. Day. So this is also known as Krishna Ashtami or Gokul Ashtami, but most commonly known as Janmashtami. But Krishna says, "Ajopi sanavyayatma." I am unborn. So where is the question of his janma, of his birth? He is ajanma. That's one of the names of Krishna. Ajanma. He is unborn. So therefore Krishna says, Janma karma chame divyam. My appearance is transcendental. It's not an ordinary janma. And that was very clearly seen by Krishna's appearance. It was demonstrated by the manner in which Krishna appeared. That he appeared, first of all, in a four-handed form, a Vishnu form, before Devaki and Vasudev, four-handed form, complete with uh, ornaments, clothes, decorations, long hair, everything. So that's unusual. No one but the Supreme Lord can appear in such a way. So definitely uh, Krishna's appearance is unusual, unusual, transcendental. But still it's mysterious, it's difficult to understand. For instance, this very point that Krishna appeared before Devaki first in a uh, four-handed Vishnu form, bewilders even many Vaishnavas who take this as evidence that the original form of God is four-handed Vishnu form and that the form of Krishna is only a transformation of the Vishnu form. Whereas the actual conclusion of Shastra is that Vishnu, the Vishnu form is an emanation from Krishna. Now that Krishna again took a baby form is bewildering. That having shown himself to Vasudeva and Devaki as the Supreme Lord, he again took the form of a baby. Now Vasudeva and Devaki, they are great devotees of Lord Vishnu. They consider him their worshipable Lord. Many, many years ago when they were in the different bodies as Prishni and Sutapa. They performed severe austerities worshipping the Supreme Lord for the sake of having him as their son, which they did. He was known as Prishni Garbha. And then again they appeared as Kashap and Aditi and the Supreme Lord again appeared as their son Upendra, Vamandu. Now again he came as their son this time as Krishna, the original form of God. But he originally appeared in a Vishnu form, which invoked the, the feelings of worship of Vasudeva and Devaki. But at the same time, they had the, the uh, affection for the Lord as their son. 
So Krishna took the form of a baby and the, the transcendental feelings of Vatsalya Ras or parental affection were invoked. And they were very afraid because they were in the prison house of Kanks. And Kanks was killing their sons one after another. And he was particularly concerned about the eighth child of Devaki, who was Krishna, because it had been predicted that the eighth child of Devaki would kill him. So, just to make sure, he was killing all of them. Yeah, but this was Devaki's eighth pregnancy. That was very clear and obvious to everyone, because Vasudeva and Devaki had been in the prison house for most of the time since they were married. And each year, they would have one child. So this was the eighth. So they were just waiting. They knew it was around time for Devaki to deliver. So Devaki was very concerned. She said, well, you're the Supreme Lord. So at the same time, she was feeling fear from Kangsa, that Kangsa will kill you. So Krishna took the form of a little baby. And by the potency of Yoga Maya, the chains came off Vasudev. The chain, he was prisoned, so the chains came off him. The doors of the prison opened. And all the inhabitants of the palace, especially the guards at the door, they all slept very deeply. So Vasudev thought to take my son, Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan, he can hide him there safely. He can keep him there because they're living in the forest there. And no one will know. Nanda Maharaj is the very close friend of Vasudev, and actually his brother also, yeah. half-brother. So, uh, to go there he had to cross, cross the river Yamuna. But it happened to be the, it's the rainy season in India now, when the rivers, they swell up. So he came to the Yamuna, but it was wide and very uh, strong current, yeah. wide yeah. and deep with a very strong current. There was heavy rain. So, so to shelter Krishna, Tatashish came and the snake formed as it, with his hoods to cover Vasudev. So yeah. Vasudev, he came to the river Yamuna, but his plan appeared to be thwarted, how to cross the river. But the river Yamuna, she's the maidservant of Krishna, later to become his wife. So she parted and made a way, yeah. so Vasudev could walk through. The, the, the raging current subsided, and she made a path by which he could walk through. But just at the side, on both sides of the path Vasudev was walking, the, the river was raging. So yeah, all around you? him it was raging, but just where he was walking, it was calm. So just when he was halfway across, in the dark night, so you can in the say pouring rain, then Krishna, the baby, stirred and fell down in, yeah. the, in the river. So Vasudev became mad in anxiety that now my son is lost in the river just to increase Vasudev's transcendental feelings of, of anxiety and love, Krishna did this. But uh, Vasudev was able to find him again in the river, pick Krishna him up and there. touch him very closely to his chest and quickly made his way to Nanda Gokul, to the, to the pasturing grounds of Nanda Maharaj. And in the dark night there, he came, he entered the uh, women's quarters, which normally a respectable person wouldn't do, but he was doing for a higher purpose. There, in the maternity home, Yashoda had on the very same night uh, delivered a girl child. So, Vasudev swapped the children. And Yashoda was fast asleep, being exhausted yeah. by the labor of childbirth. He had just then given birth to the uh, And Vasudev took the child, the, the girl child, back to Mathura. It's about... 10 kilometers, by modern calculation. So you may ask, well, why did Vasudev do that? He brought the girl child. He right. wanted to fool Kangsa that actually this is the child, knowing that Kangsa had a habit of killing his children. So why should he do that? That's not very nice. No fault on the part of Vasudev. Because uh, naturally, as a devotee, he was inclined towards Krishna. And it is the attitude of a devotee to do whatever is required in Krishna's service, despite anything else. And apart from that, he was impelled by Yoga Maya, by the internal potency of the Lord who arranges the Lord's pastor. 
Therefore, he was not to be blamed for his action. And actually, that girl, child, was Yogamaya, who is described in the Bhagavatam as Anuja. She is the younger sister of Krishna. How is that possible? Kriptimanama. Actually, the Acharyas have explained that Mother Yashoda, she gave birth to Krishna and then also, as, as well as Devaki giving birth to, to Krishna. And, and therefore, Yoga Maya is the younger sister of yeah. Krishna. We'll also find that even in Vrindavan, Krishna is sometimes addressed as Devaki Nandan. Well, how is that? Because in Vrindavan, the the Vrajavasis, they think that Krishna is Yashoda Nandan, the son of Yashoda, not the son of Devaki. Well, it just so happens, as is mentioned in the Puranas, that Yashoda has another name, Devaki. So when the gopis address Krishna as Devaki Nandan, they, are, they only have some very vague knowledge of who Vasudeva and Devaki are. They only know the village. So they, uh, they know... When they say Devaki Nanda, this means the son of Mother Yashoda. So all this subject of how Krishna is born and his different activities, which unfold from his Janma Leela, from his pastimes of taking birth, they're very mysterious. It's not easy to understand. Many people, even though they claim to believe in God, cannot accept that God comes to this world at all. They think, well, God is so great, how can he come and be among us? How can he come from any mother's womb? How can anyone be the father and mother of God when because he is the father and mother of everybody? This uh, Vasudev was considering, yeah, this is all very wonderful. This is one of the points when he considered Krishna's appearance, he considered it very wonderful. When Krishna was born, he was considering that his birth was very wonderful in at least four ways he thought of. That he had appeared fully decorated you see, with long hair and in, in a four-handed Vishnu form. Even you don't usually see young babies like that. That he had appeared in the prison house of Kangsa, not being afraid of Kangsa, even though he knew it was a very dangerous situation, he chose to be born in this situation. Yes. Vasudev also thought it was very wonderful that um, even though the even though Vasudev is a devotee of Krishna, you know he looks up to Krishna. But Krishna has appeared as his son, which means that he's taken an inferior position. And he also thought it very wonderful that Krishna, who is God, who is all-pervading, has appeared has within the womb of Devaki. How is it that God, who is all-pervading, okay, and yeah, everything is in him, he has now gone within the womb of Devaki? So Vasudevi discussed that, anyway, everything is possible for you. When he was offering prayers to Krishna, he discussed this point. That anyway, originally all the universes emanate from you in your form as Mahavishnu. All the universes are within you. But then again, you enter within the universe as Garbhadakshay Vishnu and Shiradakshay Vishnu. So that everything is within you, but that you again enter within that which is within you, you're already doing that. It is a great mystery. Krishna says in the Gita that this I am the whole universe is, is pervaded by me in my unmanifest form. Everything is within me. Still, I am aloof from all that. I'm, I'm, and I, everything is within me, within me. I'm aloof from it, and I'm also within everything. So this appears to be contradictory. How is it possible? The answer is that it's not possible for anyone except God. Uh, that is the meaning of his being God. That what is impossible for us is easy for him. He can take any number of forms. The whole universe can be with him, within him. And at the same time, he is the, the smallest thing within the universe. He enters even within to the atom. The Sanskrit word for atom is paramanu, means the, the smallest thing. But smaller than the atom is Krishna. And bigger than the universe is Krishna. So all contradictions are resolved within him. Still, it's not very easy to understand how Krishna is as he is. 
People think, well, God is too great to come to this world. He's so much above us, that why should he come and be among us? Well, the answer is that that is his causeless mercy. He has no reason to come to this world. He has nothing to gain from us. But out of his mercy upon us, he comes to deliver us. He comes especially to deliver the devotees, to give them hope. And to, even though the, the neophyte devotees, by by remembering Krishna's pastimes, they can become inspired Gali to go back vepte. home, back to God. Shugita Narthane, Shabha Shakigane, Tushichi, Jugala Dhane. Krishna performs his wonderful pastimes of singing and dancing. All the uh, the gopis, they're singing and dancing very nicely for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. So when the even neophyte devotees hear about this, they feel inspiration to go back home, back to Godhead. So Krishna comes to give impetus to even the neophyte devotee by displaying his wonderful pastime. Krishna comes for various reasons, some of which have been discussed by Kunti Devi, uh, who describes Krishna as Ajanma, you are unborn. Therefore it is very surprising, she says, how you appear in this world. And she gives various reasons why. Uh, different people give different reasons. They suggest different reasons why Krishna appears in this world. Some people say that Krishna has appeared in this world to glorify the dynasties of pious kings. Krishna appeared in the Soma Vamsha, the dynasty of the moon. So the moon god has become, and, and all of those in the Chandra Vamsha, those in the line, in the family of the moon, they have become glorified by Krishna's appearance. Then, Yado Priyasyandavaye Malayasyeva Chandanam. Krishna specifically appears in the dynasty of Yadu. Therefore, Krishna has many names connected with Yadu, such as Yadava, Yadu Sreshta, Yadu Nandan, and so on. You don't have to translate. So, Yadu Maharaj, has beca- the Yadu dynasty especially, has become glorified by the appearance of Krishna. Yadu was a great devotee of Krishna, and so Krishna has a- one of the reasons for Krishna appearing yeah, is to glorify his devotee Yadu Maharaj. Apare Vasudeva Sya Deva Kyang Yachito Bhagat. Others say, no, no, that's not why Krishna came. It's because Vasudev and Devaki prayed for him. They, they performed austerities as, as Krishna and Sutapa. Therefore he came. Ajastram asyakshem ayabhadhaya chasura dvisham. And he, others may say, no, that's not the reason he came. Why has the unborn become born? To destroy those who are, to, to destroy those who are envious of the devotees. And then someone else may give some other reason. Bharavatara ananye. Others will say that he came to, Krishna has appeared to relieve the burden of the earth. Being prayed for by Brahma, who is his son, Krishna has appeared to relieve the burden of the earth. Bhavesmin klishamanam avidya kama karma bhuhi shavana svaranahani karishaniti kechana. Others say that no, Krishna came to this world to teach the process of devotional service beginning with hearing about him and thus deliver those who are suffering in this miserable material world due to ignorance by which they perform all kinds of activities for fulfilling their sense gratification. So these are all various reasons why Krishna appears in this world. And there are many other reasons. But whatever the reasons we may say, Krishna's appearance is all auspicious. And he performed many, many wonderful activities so that even now, those who hear about Krishna can become purified. Shrinvanti, Gayanti, Grinanti, Abhikshasa, Smaranti, Nandanti, Tavehi, Tanjanaha, Taeva, Pashantya, Chirena, Tavakam, Dava, Prabaho, Paramang, Padam, Bhujam. Kunti Devi says that, O oh Krishna, those who hear about, those who chant about you, 
those who take pleasure in others hearing and chanting about you, those who take pleasure in remembering you, they will certainly see you within a short time. And as a result of seeing you, they will no longer have to see repeated births and death. This is the wonderful mercy of Krishna, that he appears in this world, even though he is the supreme, unlimited personality of God, but he appears to deliver the conditioned soul by performing wonderful pastimes and by speaking Bhagavad Gita to take us out of ignorance. So Krishna, he performed so many pastimes, which have been summarized in Srimad Bhagavatam. And have been also in other parts of the Puranas and the Acharyas. Uh, it's all wonderful to hear about Krishna. There is no end to discussing about Krishna. And this is the only happiness in this miserable material world. Narottama Dasa Koi Nitta Lila Shukamoi Shadas Varuka Moramone Narottam Das says that he, in describing the pastimes of Krishna, he says that these pastimes of Krishna, they're simply full of wonderful transcendental happiness. Yes, May they yes. ever be manifest within our minds. So for this purpose, Krishna came and Vyasadeva compiled his pastimes. And the Acharyas have given very wonderful commentaries on his pastimes. Especially the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, Vishwanachagvar Thakur has given very wonderful commentaries, explaining all the particular words used and the subtle nuances, why these particular words are used, and analyzing, because in Krishna's pastimes, especially when, when Krishna's, everything Krishna says is very deep and full of meaning. So everything he says is full of so much meaning. So Vishwara Tagore Thakur especially has analyzed yep. much of the deep meanings of what Krishna is saying, how he's acting, what he's doing. But it is unlimited. There is no, there is no end to understanding about Krishna. Even as I say in Bhagavad Gita, no one can say, I've, I finished Bhagavad Gita. I read it, I understand. There is no end to knowing what is Bhagavad Gita. Or even that one verse of Bhagavatam. That, that you, you can't come to an end, the first verse. You can't come to an end of understanding. So these uh, books... Uh, Full of transcendental knowledge, there's no comparison. Any books in any language you cannot compare with any language cannot compare with Sanskrit. We may be very proud of our Lithuanian literature or Russian literature or whatever it is. But it cannot even it's impossible that it can even begin to touch the depth of Sanskrit language because the, the language itself is it is not competent to express in the same way that Sanskrit does. And within the Sanskrit language there is no comparison to the literature comparing, describing Krishna. We sing these verses every day, but how beautiful and how deep and how full of meaning they are. <speaking in Hebrew> sound of it is very beautiful. And the meaning how Krishna is holding his flute with eyes just like blooming lotus petal with a peacock feather in his hair. And his body is very beautiful and just the color of a thick black cloud about to pour down rain. So beautiful that it is uh, attracting many, many millions of cupids. Vishesha Shobham, by its, by the uh, extraordinary beauty of Krishna's form. And every, the more we hear about Krishna, the more we can consider about his wonderful pastime. Just like how Krishna has peacock feathers in his head. Because he's playing on his flute and the, the peacocks are dancing. They all surround Krishna yes. as he plays his flute. They incite them to dance. Yes. Then being very satisfied, they offer the peacock feathers to Krishna. He then puts them in his head. Yes. It's another feature of Krishna's wonderful pastime. That in the Vaikuntha pastimes, very opulent jewel decorations, yes. they are very important. They are also there in Krishna's Vrindavan pastime. Yes. But more important are peacock feathers, no. forest flowers, different colorings they take from the earth and so coward boys stray on their bodies. The simplicity of Krishna's pastime. Now this is bewildering 
even to the devotees of Narayana, who cannot understand how how is this God? Even Brahma could not understand. He said, I, I am the son of Narayana. I am born from the lotus which comes from the uh, Nabi, from the, the navel of Narayana. And I pray to Narayana, you please come to this world to deliver the earth from the burden of the demoniac king. And then I saw he appeared in the uh, Karaga, the prison house of Kungs four-handed form and then took the form of baby Krishna. But now I see this boy, he's just running barefooted with a bunch of cows and simple uneducated cowherd boy playing on a, a bugle, buffalo horn and then when they all sit down to eat, sometimes the boys are eating and they say, oh my mother cooked something very nice. They half eat it and say, here you take it Krishna, see how you like it. That's not my father, he's not like that. You can't, oh, you can't eat food and then give it to Narayana. He's worshipped by rishis and munis. And here he is running barefoot, running after a bunch of cows. No, I don't. He doubted. I mean, you see, some people, they don't think God can appear at all. And there are others who accept, yes, Vishnu, Narayana. He comes, he takes avatars. But not like this. I mean, this is disgraceful. Below the dignity of God. But actually, this is the topmost manifestation of God. That he makes himself available to his loving devotee. God means that everyone is always worshipping him, very worship with much respect. But he's also a person. Is the, is the cornerstone of Vaishnav understanding is that God is a person. A person means supreme person. Well, you can naturally understand that people like naturally understand that people praise him, bow down to him. But after all, he's also a person. Can you imagine that the, the king is only being lauded by his panegyrists? You know, the, the king also has a, a jester, uh, joker. They keep uh, a joker. Patur- Prabhupada gave one story when he told one story once about William Gladstone, who was prime minister of England during the reign of Queen Victoria. At the height of the British Empire, he was a very grave person. Maybe you've heard of Victorian values. It means very grave. Black clothes. Black clothes. Don't do anything wrong. Very reserved. So a lot of these Victorian values, actually, apart from Queen Victoria herself, a lot of that had to do with William Gladstone, who was a great moralist. Great moralist. William uh, uh, Gladstone. Gladstone was a great moralist and a fearsome figure in the British Parliament who was famous that if anyone made said anything against his opinion, he would just glare at them. And so, many people, so many people just making a speech against him, they would say, uh, they became afraid just by his look. So a very noble, dignified, respectable, fearsome figure. So one day one person had an appointment to see Gladstone. So he was asked that you just wait outside his door. Big door. With his Direct. William Direct. Gladstone, Direct. Prime Minister of the British Empire. So he had an appointment but he had to wait. Okay. So he waited and he waited and he waited. And he thought, I wonder what's going on inside. He must be doing, must be some very important business that he's engaged in. I had an appointment with him, but it's getting later and later and later. The Prime Minister of the British Empire must be something very, very important that he's doing. So uh, the desire just to quietly open the door and look inside developed in his heart. So he looked left and he looked right. There were no guards. There were no guards. So he slowly, quietly opened the door, put his head inside, and there he saw William Gladstone, the, do- the noble, dignified head of the British Empire, in his office, on the floor, down on his hands and knees, with his grandson sitting on his back and whipping him. Get up, horse, move, horse, run fast, horse. So the Prime Minister, the noble Prime Minister of the British Empire, had become a horse for the pleasure of his grandson. Now, no one else could do that. You know, the, the members of his cabinet, you say that, cabinet? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they couldn't say, Hey, William, Bill, 
Why don't you get on the floor and I'll ride on your back like, a, like you're a horse? No one would dream of it. And if it was suggested, it would be most improper. You would immediately lose your cabinet position. I mean, it's just, it's just inconceivable. No one would think of it. But what, he, what is unthinkable for fellow members of the cabinet, highly respectable, dignified people, Manier. is possible for his grandson. Because there's an intimate relationship with Manier. love. And therefore, they can do what others, those who love him so intimately, they can do what others cannot do. But that's behind the closed door. That's, that's not for everybody. Not everyone can take Pain. part in that. So similarly, Krishna comes and displays his pastimes, which are very free, means very uh, lacking in protocol. Because they are the most, uh, because Krishna is the original form of God, and in this form, he's simply enjoying loving relationships with his devotees. All these Yashoda Nandana, Braja Janaranjana, Yamuna Tiravanacha, all these names describe how Krishna is performing wonderful pastimes with his devotees. He is Madhava, he is Madhava, the husband of the goddess of fortune, but he's more inclined to Radha. Therefore he's known as Radha Madhava. Kunja Bihari, he performs intimate pastimes in the forest bowers of Vrindavan. And though, although he's the uh, husband of the goddess of fortune, he's prefers to be known as Gopi Janavalaba. He is the see. lover of the gopis, the simple cowherd girls of Vrindavan. And Giri Varadhari, he lifts the Govardhan hill just to give, to protect his devotees, the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Even Vrindavan. defying Indra, who is also his devotee, and making Indra look like a fool, which yeah. in this case he was. He see. doesn't care so much for upholding the dignity of Indra you as see. he does to protect his devotees, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, and to perform the, wonder, the wonderful pastime of being with all his devotees, the cows and the cowherd people of Vrindavan, for seven days under the hill of Govardhan. And the Ashoda Nandana, even, even though he is born as the son of Devaki, he is better known as the son of Yashoda. Raja Janaranjana. He is the uh, darling of all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. And Yamuna Tiravanachari, he performs wonderful pastimes on the bank of the Yamuna. So therefore, uh, Krishna, even though he is the topmost form of God, he is the most available form. Holy even when he comes as Ram, he associates very intimately Negative. with so with even with monkeys. Oh, but yeah. still, he maintains a high standard of dignity. No more, but he is known as, as Ram. He is known as Maryada Purushottam, oh. the supreme Lord who maintains the re dignified religious principle. But Krishna is Lila Purushottam. He's the Supreme Lord who enacts the most wonderful past, which apparently transgress religious principles sometimes, but which in themselves constitute the topmost religious principle. Krishna's dancing with the gopis appears to be irreligious, but actually it is the exhibition of the topmost, the topmost pinnacle of religious principles. It's not very easy to understand. It is the most intimate, secret uh, understanding of the science of God. Therefore, it's there in the 10th canto of Bhagavatam. One is supposed to go through Gita and nine cantos of Bhagavatam under careful guidance before trying to enter into the mysteries of the 10th canto. It's, this is not meant for public preaching to anybody and everybody. Still, Prabhupada translated Krishna book, which if an ordinary person reads, they won't understand. I know the first book of Prabhupada that I read was Krishna book, volume 2, and I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it, and I suppose I'll never understand it. But, uh, but there was, even though it was n not at all easy to understand, but, but it was it? very, I found it very attractive. So this uh, Gita, Krishna book, all the books Prabhupada has given, that is a great exhibition of his mercy to extend Krishna's mercy no by one. giving us information of Krishna. And I'd like to speak much more about this, but I'm already going late. But uh, one thing I wanted to suggest, Krishna book, Krishna Yagya Purush Prabhu, can you bring some copies of Krishna? Uh, is that 
This Krishna book is such a wonderful contribution to human society. Every home should have this book in their home. And especially at least all the devotees should have at least one copy, if not several copies. You, you, can have, you, should, you should have one actually for every member of the family. And one in every room, and then a few in the corner for giving to your Keep some for giving to anyone who comes. Arba to your friends. The devotees in Lithuania should make an ambition to put Krishna book and Bhagavad Gita in every home in Lithuania. So I would like to invite all of you on this auspicious day of Sri Krishna Janmashtami to bring Krishna to your home in the form of Krishna book, which is non different from Krishna. And even if you have a copy on this auspicious day, you can make someone else's life auspicious by giving them a copy of Krishna book. Could someone give me some, some copies of Krishna book? So we would like to distribute some copies of Krishna book and make my visit to Lithuania somewhat useful. If you would kindly be kind to me, then you will take some copies of Krishna book. I'd like to distribute some books to all of you here. What is, what is the price of these? Today's a special price. Twelve liters. Usually it's how much? Twenty. Usually twenty liters. Today because we want to spread Krishna's mercy even more. Yeah,